Welcome, bipolar winter comrades. We are on a journey to reveal the prophecies of the world's largest and most powerful doomsday cult to usher in the end of all life on Earth. Here, we engage you to help expand the army of responders. We must enlist the intelligence services, military, and media in every country on Earth to thwart this doomsday cult's unfolding plans to execute the world's end. You have reached the podcast of all podcasts. Good morning. The members of the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventist Church taught that the United States government was going to come in and persecute them and possibly imprison them or even kill them. They taught that the United States government was the second great Satan or the second beast mentioned in the book of Revelation. Every member of the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventist Church was a baptized member of the parent organization called the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The Seventh-day Adventist Church has one of the largest chain of hospitals and chains of private schools in the world. It's made up of approximately 55 million people that are in some way related to the church maybe 22 million that are baptized active members, possibly 15 million that are inactive or have left the church, and possibly 12 to 15 million that are investigating, looking to become members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The parent church, that is the Seventh-day Adventist Church, also teaches that the United States government is the second great Satan in the book of Revelation and that the United States government is going to be coming soon to hunt them down, to possibly arrest them, and in some cases, kill, put to death, some of the Seventh-day Adventist Church members. And you wonder, how could this be possible? In 2023, who would be teaching such a thing? And yet, that is what is being taught. The Seventh-day Adventist Church also teaches that we are right at the end of the world as we know it. The end of all life on earth will soon be taken as the return of their concept of the Messiah is revealed. So in the Jewish Oral Torah, in the Talmud, it is taught that earth is the only place where human beings are present in the whole universe. And if you look with Hubble in 45 billion light years in every direction, there's no real indication yet there is any other form of life out there. That is a huge expanse of space. And the only reason Hubble can't see further than that is because light is moving away from us faster than the speed of light. Planets and stars are moving away faster than the speed of light and Hubble will never be able to capture uh, those images. There is also a video below in the description box, this video, below this video, that you can see that it explains how Hubble and why Hubble cannot see more than 45 billion light years in every direction. If you go back 13.7 or 13.8 billion years in time, science tells us that there is no indication that human beings have existed in a situation where they could destroy could could invent technologies that could destroy all life on earth and yet in the last 40 to 60 years humankind has literally developed over 20 different weapons 
that can destroy all life on Earth. And we're not just talking about nuclear weapons or biological weapons, chemical weapons, microwave weapons, laser weapons, radiation weapons, etc. We're talking about many kinds of weapons that in some cases haven't even been disclosed yet by governments whose military has developed them. And so with the ability to destroy all life on Earth has come the same science that allows us to understand how to extend life. Look at what David Sinclair does at Harvard University and all of the labs that he is associated with around the world who are also studying life extension. And we are living in the only time in history that there is an indication that we may actually see that technology add many years to life, not just the years that we have seen good medicine and good health add over the last century. <clears throat> Basically, we've entered World War III as a planet, and a lot of people may ask, well, how can that be? There's a video below of the Pope basically describing how we have entered World War III. You can see it in the description below this video. Basically, we have seen trade and currency and trade wars that are a prelude to World War III as a form of weaponry that's never been used before. We're watching social media weaponized and digital mining of secrets from one state looking for secrets of another state. None of this has ever happened before. We even have diplomats maneuvering for wartime positioning. And now we start seeing countries invading other countries and talking about using one of those 20 weapons, nuclear, biological, or chemical weapons, to attack other countries. <clears throat> there is literally no way to explain why and how all of this has happened in the last 40 to 60 years. Out of all of the depths of history, depth of time of history, and expanse of this universe, why here and now? Well, according to the Jewish calendar in the Jewish years, from the time the first human souls came and were um, placed on this planet, we are nearing the end of the sixth millennium. Each of the days of creation mentioned in the book of Genesis represent 1,000 years and of Earth's history. And even though you may say that the Earth is much, much older than 6,000 years, there is a reasoning behind the Jewish calendar that has to do with human consciousness on a level unseen before 6,000 years ago on this planet. And we are nearing the end of the sixth millennium, which means that the Messiah, according to those teachings, must appear before the beginning of the seventh millennium. When the Messiah appears, there are several things that happen. War ends. Peace begins to reign. Leaders of all nations are taught by the Messiah to lay down their instruments of war and to turn them, in fact, into instruments of peace. They begin learning the Torah. They begin learning the scripture. They, become, they begin to become one large brotherhood on the planet. They do not they do not teach this 
in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they teach that their Messiah is going to return and destroy all life. And when that happens, basically the end of the world happens. And all of those who are expecting to live longer lives because of the technologies that are now available actually are, are killed and die. Maybe not from that technology of weaponry, but from the Messiah that the Seventh-day Adventist Church teaches is going to appear. So the reason that I am making this video is to ask <clears throat> the viewers to look at the look at the video below created by Evangelist for the Seventh-day Adventist Church describing the seven last plagues that are to roll out mentioned in the book of Revelation because those seven last plagues are what are to begin happening and possibly have already begun to happen. And there are those who are now questioning, is it possible that one of the wealthiest organizations in the world, who is also considered one of the major doomsday cults, maybe one of the largest doomsday cults to ever t exist in the history of the planet, could their leaders or a few of their leaders ever be involved in trying to self-fulfill prophecy just like David Koresh and his leaders helped self-fulfill their prophecies by goading the United States government and pulling them into a tragedy that they did not see coming. In other words, <clears throat> is it possible that subtle um, subliminal um, messages are being put out on social media that is turning the world against Jews, against Catholics, against Protestants, against the United States government. By a church that prophesied that has to happen before the end of the world and before the coming of their Messiah. You see, if this doesn't start happening pretty soon, they run the risk of losing members, which means losing tithe, income, and so is an organization that is this powerful and this large capable of even sitting down <clears throat> and talking about the possibilities of self-fulfilling prophecies, including one or more of the seven last plagues as a way to make people hope in their organization, in their church, that the end of the world will soon be upon us, as morbid as that sounds. Anyway, I hope this video has caught your attention and if there are church leaders or organizations out there that would like to um, have a Zoom meeting or talk about some of these issues or invite other others who understand the Seventh-day Adventist eschatology, these teachings of eschatological events are something that should be alarming to every organization, especially to the Catholic Church, the Protestant Church, and, and um, members of the United States government, citizens of the United States government. It should also be especially interested, is interesting to members of the House of Israel, to Jews around the world. There is a reason why there is a rise in anti-Semitism. Over the last 20, 30 years, there's been a steady rise and it is something that is alarming, but it is something that the Seventh-day Adventist Church may have a little bit of involvement in using some of their own teachings and some of their own expressions and their own PR, public relations, advertising, promotions as a way to get other people to start thinking in terms of the Jewish teachings in a very bad light. <clears throat> anyway, there are also videos on that below that you might be interested in watching. And until next week, thank you for stopping by.